Thank you, everybody. Um, it's always a little hard to talk about support because what, what, what are you going to talk about, right? There are so many tickets, there are so many details, right, to all the tickets. So I'm just trying to um, introduce us as a team again, right? And I'm just, just going to explain a little bit how we work so you might understand why we always ask those detailed questions, right? Um, asking you what order, what quote exactly, what language combination, all this stuff. And, and sometimes I think sometimes people wonder why do they want to know all this stuff. And, um, uh, and uh, another topic that I think we should uh, we should uh, briefly talk about is security. That is a, that is a raising concern for most of our customers. And more and more we get those questions: How can we make Plunet secure? How how can we get our files secure? And then just um, closing with a little outlook: uh, What we're gonna what we're gonna aim for. So first of all, uh, you might have uh, well we all have met through email. That's for sure. So some of you have met some of us. And again, we have our support desk right over here, and we still have a bunch of colleagues uh, here at the, at the summit as well. So if I, I know, I know it's not not, new, not news for you, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stop by the booth. And um, next up, I just want to talk a little bit about how we work. Um, so let's assume you found a new bug or you found an unexpected behavior. Uh, some uh, some of you know how that feels, and. Um, um, you submit a ticket, or you tell us that there's a problem. Well, first of all, what we do, we try to understand that specific case and that very specific, sp specific uh, environment. So, for example, I cannot add, say, a language combination. Well, then the question is, where is that? Is that in a request? Is that in a quote? Is that in the order? Uh, so we really try to understand the, the very specific case. Once we did that, we try to... We try to understand what's the impact uh, and, and how does it apply to other areas of the system, maybe. Yeah? Um, once we did that, and once we do have that understanding, we have to define exact steps how to reproduce that issue, right? What, what do I have to do in order to, to uh, generate a certain behavior, right? And only then, and only then we can ask our development team to, to have those uh, uh, behavior um, fixed or that, that bug fixed so that it, that it works like, like we expected. Once they were able to, to fix it, um, we'll go back and test it and see if that, is, if that is what we really wanted. And once that's the case, we'll release it to you guys and then, and then you have that fix. So, and, th and this is the reason why we often ask for many, many details because we really need to understand every, every, every bug, every ticket needs, needs to be understood in detail. Um, next up, uh, and this is something that's very interesting because some of this relates to uh, Sufian's uh, presentation yesterday. Um, we have very often customers ask us, uh, ask us uh, how can we uh, get our files that we handle with Plunet, how do we make them secure because ask them, uh, customers are asking for this. Well, uh, then often the, the, the first suggestion is, um, well, we're just going to encrypt them and, and then they're secure, right? Well, if you do that, you might hear somebody uh, saying, well, all of a sudden our cat tool cannot open those files anymore. Or they say, you know, translator, uh, translators called us and they said they cannot uh, files open anymore as well because it says they are encrypted. Or even customers cannot open deliverables because they're encrypted. Now the question is, what, what is encryption really? Right. So, and and just just briefly, I think most of you know that. But just briefly, I have a I have a I have a text file, right? And then I define a key here, and then I, with help of this key, I encrypt that file, right? And so I have an encrypted file. I cannot read that anymore, unless I have that key again, and can decrypt it, right? But unless I don't have that, unless I have that key, I cannot decrypt it and therefore not read it anymore. So encrypting files will not work, right? Okay, so what are we gonna do? Now, in order to understand security a little more, and this is, again, this is something that you also mentioned yesterday, uh, Sufjan, when it, when, it, when it comes to security, there's many layers that apply, right? So, of course, there's a secure infrastructure, there is integrated and secure applications, right? This is, this is something that we have, we have that pen testing, for example, Plunet applies to that, obviously, right? Um, you have to have, or you want to have a, a secured and monitored communication. You want to know who communicates with what, when, right? And you want to know um, who has access to what and, and when, right? 
Uh, and, then, and then, of course, awareness. Awareness is very important because people need to know if they send a confidential file via email and it's not encrypted, then this is, this is a security risk, right? So keeping that in mind, um, let's just look at those, those, those two parts here a little bit more because this is really um, uh, when it comes to Plune. And, and this might be a little surprising. But say you have, an, say you have a considerably secure inf IT infrastructure and you have Plunet, right? And you might have a cut tool, right? And you integrate that with each other. And that might be in the same secure infrastructure here. Then actually you have already a secure environment because what we have through Plunet, you can have your, your customers or whoever submits requests uh, securely um, uh, um, uh, submit inbound files, right, through the portal. Yeah? Um, you can have your vendors either work in your cat tool or work in Plunet, right, also through a portal, not via email, not via any other communication. And then finally, you can uh, deliver your file, again, secure, not via email, but by having a customer log into the portal, send them a download link so they go basically into, the, into Plunet back and, and download those files. And well, you know what, this, this is really, this is really, and if you have that already, you might be already secure, right? So just to summarize it again, um, a secure IT infrastructure, that's really the key there. Um, to have access control and, 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 and awareness over who accesses uh, files, and, and of course to avoid uh, uh, sending files via email or some instant messaging service, some, some third party services, very, very important and uh, uh, to onboard your customers and your translators to your, to your tools, right? So they can directly work in, in those tools and don't have to send emails back and forth. And, um, and, and, and so you see, hard disk and database encryption is just one of many options, but it is not the one option to, to secure your files. And so maybe you have already your files secured, right? So good, good news to your customers. Well, I think we, we got there, right? Is there any question? Does that make sense, <laughs> by, by the way? Yeah, okay. Well, I guess everybody's still a little tired from lunch. I get it, I get it. Um, just finally, I just, wanna, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, um, a quick outlook what we're gonna aim for in support. Um, first of all, uh, we introduced auto upgrade last year and we already have auto upgrade to a very limited, um, not a very limited, but a limited uh, a set of uh, Plunet installations. We will continue to expand this. So um, also if you have a cut tool, a cut integration in the future, you will be able to auto upgrade and so you don't have to submit an upgrade ticket anymore. You can just do it, go ahead and do it yourself. Um, another big topic, and this is something that many, many departments uh, at Plunet work, uh, work on, is, is um, a central point of service. So uh, at the moment, there is, there is different sources of information that are available to you. Uh, what we really want to aim for is, is, a, is a central point where you can go in and uh, you can type in your question. And wherever there is content available for that question, you'll get a suggestion for. And, and, and only then, and, and if you should not be able to, to find the content that you were looking for or, to, 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 uh, or you don't find the help that you were uh, looking for, then you, get, then you get the opportunity to, or then you get the chance to um, uh, submit a ticket, ask a question, right? So, but then in the future, you will have one central uh, system where you will have all the information available to you, right? Um, and another, another big topic, and it kind of relates to each other, right? Um, another uh, topic is really uh, that we aim for more content for self-guidance. So whenever you have a problem, you, you should be able to figure out most of the things yourself real quick, right? It's always, you know, I have something small maybe, just a little hint that I need, right? And, and it, it'd be great if, if you could just find that information in a system right away, yeah, instead of having to type up a ticket and then uh, maybe wait for a response or, or whatever, right? So, um, and... Um, I don't know how we're doing on time because we have, I don't, I don't know. Are we, how are we doing on time? Good, because that's it, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> do we have any, do we have any, any yes. questions?